Hello and welcome to Lesson 8.3, Properties of Planes. As seen in 8.2, one scalar equation uh, form of the plane is called the scalar form. Scalar form deals with the normal of the directional vector. So let's first draw a little example of what I mean here. So I'm going to draw a sheet of paper as an example of a plane. So let's say this plane has directional vector A inside of it. And in order for it to be a plane, it also has another directional vector. Let's call that one B. Well, the normal is this vector right here. The normal is orthogonal. To the directional vectors. So that means it has to be a right angle to each one of these. So, if you can remember, if a plane consists of two basis vectors, uh, to determine the normal between those two basis vectors, let's call these two basis vectors, in this case, u and v, you're going to only take the cross product of these two vectors. So this requires you to remember how to work a cross product. Once you have that cross product, you state that first piece as A, second piece as B, and third piece as C. And just like fi finding the uh, equation of a Cartesian plane, uh, sorry, Cartesian line in two-dimensional space, to find a plane in uh, three-dimensional space to find the value of d you're going to take the negative of the a value times the x of the original point plus b times y sub zero of the original point plus c times the z component of the original point so let's see how this works out in an example here Okay, so we're going to determine the scalar equation of the plane that consists of the points 3, 1, 2, 4, negative 6, 2, and 5, negative 4, 1. To do this, we're going to first put it in partly vector form. So what I suggest right now is find two vectors that have a direction. Maybe to help us out, we'll go with the direction for vector A, or our first point, as we're going to take the vector BA, and for our second one, we'll find the vector CB. So, pause the video at this moment and work these two vectors out. Okay. So now that means you got to take the point, the vector 3, 1, 2, and subtract the vector 4, negative 6, 2 from it. That gives us negative 1, negative 5, oops, sorry, my apologies. That should be 7, and 0. And vector B should be the values of 4, negative 6, and 2. Subtract 5, negative 4, and negative 1. Okay. So now that we got that, we're going to find our normal vector. To find our normal vector, we're going to find cross product of these two vectors. So pause your video right at the most moment and work out the cross product between these two vectors. So let's show you how to do that. I'm going to write the values of negative 1, 7, and 0 off to the side here so that I can work it out. And this off to the side. Okay, so here I have 21 minus 0. 
here I have 0 minus negative 3. Here I have 2 minus negative 7. So my normal vector turns out to be 21, positive 3, and 9. Now, because normal vectors can be any scalar multiple size, you can even reduce this in size if you want. If you notice that they're all divisible by 3, you can. You can also reduce it later on if you wanted to. So this turns out to be 7, 1, and 3. Okay, so now the information we have based on this is this is the 7x plus y plus 3z plus d is equal to 0 is our scalar equation of a plane. To figure the rest of this out, all you need to do is substitute one of the points, 3, 1, 2, 4, negative 6, 2, or 5, negative 4, negative 1 into the original equation or into this uh, scalar form of this equation. So I'm going to substitute 3, 1, and 2 in to work this out. Oops, that was a 3, 1, and a 2. d value turns out to be negative 28. So there's the scalar form of my plane. 7x plus y plus 3z minus 28 equals 0. Sometimes they take the negative 28 and they move it to the other side of the equation and set this equal to 28. Okay, so Moving right along. Now that we've got that line that you have, what we're going to do is we're going to see how it relates to this line. Sorry, now that we have the plane. So remember, the plane has the equation 7x plus y plus 3z minus 28 equals zero. Well, something you might notice right away, this 7, 1, and 3 is the same number 7, 1, and 3 right here. Well, what does that mean? Well, again, the 7, 1, and 3 from the plane means that's the direction of the normal. Well, this part right here represents the direction of the line. So the line has the same direction as 7, 1, and 3 for the line. That starts at the point, wherever that point might be, 3, 10, and negative 1. So what you can see clearly right here is this line is actually perpendicular to the plane. I'm going to use a term orthogonal. It doesn't actually matter whether the point 3, 10, negative 1 actually lies in the plane or not. It doesn't actually matter. It just means that the line is going to intersect at some point in that plane. It doesn't matter what that point of intersection is, but we'll find those kinds of points of intersection later on. Okay, so. Now let's compare the line 3, 10, negative 1 and negative 1, negative 2, 3 to the plane. So again, I'm going to write down my plane equation. It's 
So that was 7x plus 3y, oops, sorry, my apologies. Plus y plus 3z equal, sorry, again, minus 28 equals 0. So what you'll notice right now is now this 7, 1, and 3 does not match to the direction in any way. So now I want to determine if point 3, 10, and negative 1 lie in the plane. Because if it does, then there's also a possibility that this line may actually fit in the plane itself. So, to do that, all we have to do is substitute the value 3, 10, negative 1 into this equation and see if it equals 0. Because we don't know if it equals 0, separate it into the left side and right side. So 7 times 3 plus 10 plus 3 times negative 1 minus 28. So as you can see, 21 plus 10 is 31. 31 minus 3 is 28. 28 minus 28 is 0. So, therefore, 3, 10, negative 1 lies in the plane. So the next option, the next possibility we can see is whether or not this direction is actually related to the plane in any way. And we know it's not parallel, but can it be perpendicular? So is negative 1, negative 2, 3 orthogonal to the plane? And how we can check that is dot product. So I'm going to take the two directions. And I'm going to dot them with each other. So negative 1 times 7 is negative 7. Negative 2 times 1 is negative 2. 3 times 3 is 9. This equals 0. So here we see, therefore, the vector negative 1, negative 2, 3 is parallel to the plane, or has the same direction. Well, because that direction is now in the same as the plane, and the point lies in the plane, therefore we can conclude that this line lies in the plane. And that's how it's related to the plane, which might have also noticed earlier is if we look back at part A, so I'm going to go right back to part A here, negative 1, negative 2, 3 is actually one of the directions we've worked out. It's our direction for vector B. So it actually shows you that it is parallel to the plane right there. Okay. This concludes our lesson.